We don't really get earthquakes in this country, and when we do, they're normally the subject of derision, causing untold destruction as tiles fall off roofs, wheelie bins are tipped over, and in the worst of cases, your cup of tea might tumble off the table and spill all over the carpet. These are not quite what you'd call natural disasters, particularly when compared with the truly devastating impact of earthquakes year in and year out around the world. But the truth is that the UK has had its fair share of major earthquakes through the centuries. Granted, they're much fewer and further between, but in some cases, the British ground has shaken so violently that church spires have fallen to the ground, sea cliffs have collapsed, and thousands of houses have been destroyed or severely damaged. So let's take a look at some of the most notable earthquakes in British history, starting with the most powerful earthquake ever recorded in the UK. Back on the 7th of June 1931, the UK was hit by an earthquake measuring 6.1 on the Richter scale, a truly enormous shake by British standards. And the only reason that you don't hear more about this earthquake is that its epicentre was thankfully about 60 miles off the coast at Dogger Bank, well known to listeners of the shipping forecast and the site of two naval battles in the First World War. Despite striking in the middle of the North Sea though, the 1931 quake was so severe that shaking was felt widely across the country, as well as in Denmark, Belgium and even France, while moderate damage was done to buildings along the east coast of England. A church spire in the Yorkshire town of Filey was twisted by the earthquake, multiple chimneys in the region fell off roofs, parts of the chalk cliffs at Flamborough Head began to crumble, and one woman in Hull is said to have died as a result of a heart attack prompted by the tremor. Even further away in London, Madame Tussaud's waxwork of the murderer Dr. Crippen had its head fall off as a result of the shaking, but none of this quite stacks up as a major natural disaster. The remote location of the quake's epicenter was the saving grace there, but there have been a number of slightly less powerful tremors which have struck on the British mainland, and as a result have proved far more damaging to this inevitably underprepared island. One of the most damaging earthquakes in modern British history is often touted as the infamous Colchester quake of the 22nd of April 1884. Though much less powerful than the Dogger Bank earthquake, measuring 4.6 on the Richter scale, the tremor struck at a shallow depth of just two miles beneath the ground, its epicentre located in between a number of small rural villages on the outskirts of Colchester in Essex. Overall, a total of more than 1,200 buildings were damaged by the earthquake, ranging from minor impacts like cracks in walls and broken foundations in towns further away like Ipswich, to the full destruction of medieval houses, barns and churches in the villages of Verley, Wyvernhoe, Langenhoe and more on the outskirts of Colchester. In total, the earthquake caused more than £10,000 worth of damage, about £1.5 million in today's money. A number of poor people were also left homeless, and two people are said to have died, albeit likely not directly from the earthquake itself. Colchester itself suffered relatively little major damage in the quake, its prized range of Roman and Norman structures still standing to this day, though its people and those in the surrounding area were left terrified as the quake caused the ground to move violently for as long as 20 seconds. It all sounds like scary stuff, particularly as the UK, its people, and most crucially its buildings, have never been geared up to withstand large earthquakes. But why don't we get them in this country? Well, as you'll likely know, earthquakes are generally caused by two tectonic plates either crashing into one another or moving apart. And so it's on the boundaries of major plates, as well as notable fault lines, that you get the most violent earthquakes. The UK, as luck would have it, is situated deep in the middle of the Eurasian tectonic plate, hundreds of miles away from any plate boundaries or fault lines, and as such, it's almost impossible for a major earthquake to occur. That doesn't mean we don't get any earthquakes in this country though. In fact, there are on average between two and 300 earthquakes in the UK every year, as stresses within the plate are released with a burst of energy. This, of course, usually causes earthquakes that measure much lower on the Richter scale, ones and twos that are barely noticeable as we go about our daily business. But of course, plant pots and cups of tea falling over as a result of the earth shaking are far from the only perils of a British earthquake. The most damaging earthquake to hit Great Britain took place over 400 years ago in 1580, 
and it hit right in the middle of the Dover Strait in the English Channel. Measured somewhere between a 5.3 and a 5.9 on the Richter scale, the quake caused two deaths in England and many more across the Channel in northern France and Flanders. While sections of the towering white cliffs of Dover fell into the sea, ships were sunk by the swelling of the sea, and numerous buildings collapsed or sustained heavy damage, including a famous crack in a parish church at Broadstairs in eastern Kent, which is still visible today. As far away as London, intense shaking occurred and chimneys fell off roofs, while stonework at Ely Cathedral in Cambridgeshire, some 100 miles away from the epicentre in the Channel, fell to the ground as a result of shaking. However, perhaps the greatest damage of the 1580 quake wasn't physical but emotional. The earthquake hit on the 6th of April, the Wednesday before the Easter weekend, and as such many people around the country saw the tremor as a bad omen in the lead up to the holiest of days, while Puritans blamed lax morals and the work of the devil for the devastating quake. Now these are just three of the most famous earthquakes to have hit the UK through history but there have been plenty more which have caused their fair share of damage, terror or simply confusion, ranging from relatively recent earthquakes in Derby in 1957 and Market Raisin in Lincolnshire in 2008, which measured above a 5 on the Richter scale and which were felt widely across England. There are also plenty of well-recorded tremors that occurred centuries ago, another major one in the Dover Strait in 1382, and a huge quake, possibly a 6 on the Richter scale, that struck near Glastonbury in southwest England back in 1275. But of course, while the UK is fortunate not to suffer earthquakes on its own territory, that doesn't mean it's left entirely unaffected by tremors elsewhere in the world. The most famous case of this happening came in 1755, when an enormous earthquake struck off the coast of the Portuguese capital of Lisbon and entirely destroyed the city, causing as many as 50,000 deaths. Thought to be one of the deadliest earthquakes ever recorded, the 1755 Lisbon quake measured 7.7 .7, or possibly even higher on the Richter scale, and as such it also created a huge tsunami that spread right across the Atlantic, devastating coastal communities in Spain, North Africa, the Azores, and also rolling towards the shores of Great Britain and Ireland. In fact, the historic Spanish arch in the coastal Irish city of Galway was partially destroyed by the tsunami. Most of England's south coast escaped damage as the French coast bore the brunt of the waves. But at Mounts Bay in Cornwall, there were reports of a 10-foot high wave that smashed into the shore, though no serious damage was done. So while we like to giggle when wheelie bins tumble and plant pots crack after an earthquake that pales in comparison to natural disasters around the world, the UK has undoubtedly had its fair share of major tremors through history. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you found it an interesting watch.